So, the, the main and the key sentence that we will be repeating all over the, this short presentation is turning information into action. We are practitioners and that's what we focus on. We work with uh, designers, we work with uh, campaigners, advocates and, and technologists, people who program different types of software and so on. And we would like to start from showing you some images uh, that are, are quite inspirational. And the first one is the uh, uh, something I have on my wall, which is the Amnesty International campaign against uh, genital mutilation. But you can clearly see there's uh, three roses and they are sewn with sewn petals. Um, you have a beautiful image representing a terrible story behind it. And it's, it's just powerful. An uh, image that tells you immediately, gives you think uh, about what is the, the reason they're running this campaign, what is happening, and what the problem is all about. Um, and we can go for the next one, I think. And mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but unfortunately you can't see it so well. Um, it's, it's actually a really beautiful image. It's a very fragile sort of velvety petals of the rose and you can see how they're sewn together. And um, you have to imagine that a little bit, I'm afraid. But it does give the user, the, the reader, let's say, space to think about the issue in a way that, for example... So looking, this is again from Good Magazine, but looking in a bit more detail about how you use water over the course of a day. And on the left side, um, you can see where you rise and shine, as it says, you know, when you get up in the morning right the way through till the end of the day, and the different steps that you take and what water that involves. And the blue droplets there show direct water usage, and the green droplets show indirect. And uh, yeah, bad news for meat eaters, because the beef in the middle there at dinner is really quite stacked up with the... Uh, the green water droplets compared to, for example, salad. But the main thing is for the user and for the reader, this kind of invites you to explore the issue in more detail and think, you know, look through it and think, oh, I didn't know that. You know, this is the, this is the I didn't know that factor that it's able to present to you. Yeah, one more thing on that one. And they also have sense of humor if you look at the, uh, the, the bad thing. So they, they show the thing that was bad and a good thing. Taking a bath, they show that actually alternative to taking a bath is no bath at all, <laughs> which may not be a good idea. It could be good for justifying some people's behavior. But. Okay, and this is another one looking down on water again, but in much more detail, looking at comparing products. And this is a way of representing information, but it's very hard to represent in a text. How do you, you know, cross-compare um, across products that you consume? And then invite the reader to think about, you know, for example, um, staple crops, like what's the relationship um, difference between eating rice um, compared to wheat, for example, where, um, you know, this, they take up masses of arable farming land, but they, they do consume this image that was sent to me yesterday, which I thought was kind of funny. But, um, yeah, oh, are we saying that if people represent, you know, these issues with fabulous graphics that everything's going to change? Well, no, uh, we're not. Um, what we are saying, though, is that information, this is, this is where we come from in our work, information is a really critical asset in campaigning, and it's often the most important asset that the organizations, especially individuals acting by themselves, have. And, you know, I put this image up there because we feel it's a kind of David and Goliath battle where, you know, with limited resources but the right information and the right way of presenting it can actually have a big impact on large concerns who have you know, much more resources. Um, so what we try to do is work with, we work with advocates um, working on rights issues, working on environmental issues, on human rights and, and mostly in the developing world. Um, and we, we see it as a kind of formula. Um, on the left here, we put in this, you know, targeted advocacy. So it's about what, what are you saying to who, when, um, and, and where are you putting that information? And then on the other side, what we've said here is really good data, but what we're talking about is, you know, evidence-based, you know, information that really stands up to scrutiny, it's well-researched, and it means something. Um, and then in the bottom uh, circle, we've got there, you know, the right packaging, which is something that we've been showing you, you know, how do you present these issues so that they engage people in environments where they're really overloaded with lots of different messages and lots of different requests. And so it's, the, you know, the way those three things come together that you get very interesting evidence-based campaigning that we think really works. 
So so now we're coming to the core of this of this short talk, which is basically about uh, what is the relationship between design and advocacy and campaigning, and what, what is our position, what, what we are actually trying hard, hard, I think, to do in that area. So as Steph said, we work a lot with, uh, with advocates and campaigners, and those are groups from East Africa to to India and Cambodia and so on. We work with uh, people with HIV AIDS and with uh, with sex workers, etc. Um, the, the whole idea is that we, we kind of call ourselves uh, interpreters, if you like. We, we're not coming into places and uh, people environments telling them this is what you should be doing, this is the best way of solving your problems and so on. It's more about the process of learning and we try to bring people uh, that are much more exposed than we are. We kind of uh, interact here as conveners uh, and so on. So we focus mostly on, on the few words that people were using before in their presentations like creativity, which is quite important. Um, and a par part of the, you know, how we can express creativity is by, by, by design. And this slide is showing you a group of four, four people working. No, it's fine, you can, you can go on. Um, but trying to work together and, and come with uh, different solutions for their, their, their problems. So uh, we try to get people together that are representing different, different uh, sectors. So as I said before, those are campaigners, advocates, those are designers, and techies, and people who are trying to get through discussion and brainstorming actually come up with real solutions. And the whole question is uh, really um, to create a change. And the question is, how do you create the change? You know, there's a lot of people talking about um, what, that we are in a very bad position right now, that this and that is going wrong, that uh, uh, many people said this and, and that, and etc. But uh, only a few of us actually are, are trying to act. And uh, we work with a number of those groups, we'll show you something at the end uh, as well, that are trying to come up with either a solution to a problem or we've asked the people, when you, when you try to create a change, you, you need somebody to actually do something, like really physically, or have a power to force somebody else who is in power to create a change, to create that change. And sometimes it ends up on the streets, and sometimes it ends up in a negotiation between those who are protecting the current state of, of affairs in the system uh, with those who, who see a need for changing that, that state of affairs in the system. I think it's a um, yeah, and, and I think just this thing about finding storylines, I mean, you've just seen loads of examples of very visual campaigns, but most campaigns don't look like that. Most advocates um, you know, do hard research and they produce 60-page reports that end up on shelves. That's what happens to most campaigns or most advocacy work. Um, and what we're trying to do um, with organizations is help them, what we call, find their own storylines. So it means take you know, these masses of data that they've collected, these, um, you know, they're often monitoring situations for years, and they have tons of data and they don't really know what to do with it. Um, and we help them find the storylines and, and get them to work with designers. Now, in most of the countries we work in, there isn't a discipline of information design. Um, and to be frank, if we bring designers from, let's say, the, the West or however you want to term it, um, you know, they're either used to working in a commercial environment and they want commercial rates, or they just don't get the issues at all. They just don't really understand and don't really want to engage um, in the way that we'd hoped that they would. So that's why we focus on helping um, advocates themselves think creatively. Um, and I'm just getting a little nod to move along. I'm just going to, because we showed lots of examples and we didn't say what difference any of them made, so I'm just going to show this one very quickly, which is um, an organization called Global Witness, based here in London, who were working on um, the forestry issues in Cambodia, and they produced a report just showing, this is, I mean, design-wise, I guess it could lose a little work, um, but it, the main thing is it shows you um, the relationship between these particular officials, national government, military level and police, and it, these little symbols on the right hand side show you, you know, who receives payment, who provides armed protection, and who participates directly um, in, legal, in illegal timber <coughs> trade. And um, the difference this made is that within six months of the report being released, the World Bank uh, really, you know, and launched an inquiry into what was going on in deforestation in Cambodia, and therefore it's led to different um, changes in the system as well. So so I think it's important to remember, you know, you can raise awareness and make people think about issues, but it's important to remember that something has to happen at the end of that, something has to change. And the change isn't really in the hands often of the advocates or the designers, it's the policy makers or the multilaterals or the international governments, and they're the ones that have to, have to be convinced. 
So, lastly, um, just what we do basically. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my assistant here is showing you two lovely guides. Um, this is one called Visualizing Information for Advocacy, another on Maps for Advocacy. So.